Typography has a purpose. Fonts are designed to express a mood, to be aesthetically pleasing, and to sell. But regardless of the desired outcome, fonts are meant to be readable. Over the centuries, typographers have sought to create the most readable font by adjusting line thickness, serifs, curvature, height, italics, baselines, cap lines, tracking, kerning, descenders, ascenders, joints, legs. And until recently, readability has been relatively subjective, a matter of preference. But when nearly 70% of the population today experiences a level of reading difficulty, some propose we take a scientific approach. This has been the mission of educational therapist Dr. Bonnie Shaver Troop. In 2018, after 20 years of experimentation and partnerships with typeface designers in Google, Dr. Shaver Troop presented a font scientifically proven to increase reading speeds. Lexand. By definition, typography is the product of technology. The first standardized font came about in the 1400s with the invention of Johannes Gutenberg's movable type printing press. Prior to this technology, scribes copied books by hand. Gutenberg called the typeface used by this press black letter, a beautiful font, but not necessarily the easiest font to read. In 1501, Aldus Minutius introduced italics as a way to fit more words on a page, therefore saving the printer money. Over the following three centuries, some of today's most recognizable fonts were introduced. Inventions like wooden molds, the linotype machine, photo setting machines, and the typewriter each introduced waves of new fonts. While these fonts became generally easier to read, the majority were designed for aesthetic, artistic purposes. The science wasn't really there. For a long time, the questions of typographic appropriateness for reading was at best a subjective opinion. I'm Thomas Jockin and I'm a typeface designer. In the late 1990s, Dr. Shaver Troop worked for a private school corporation in the San Francisco Bay Area. She was working to increase the reading skills of students through the traditional techniques used by educators for decades. But these techniques overlooked something so simple, font. There was lots of research on typography, but none that drew this connection to this degree, to have a causal link between typographic factors and reading performance. So Dr. Shaver Troop got to work answering this simple question. Can a font really increase reading speeds? Not just for those who struggle, but even for those in the 99th percentile. At first, the research received little support. Dr. Shaver Troop recalled being laughed at for even proposing the idea. So in 2000, she left her job to focus solely on this endeavor and began manipulating fonts herself in Microsoft Word. She would hyper expand the character, stretch the letter form horizontally and track it out. Those are the two modes that she would do, which, mean, which uh, deformed the letter form, specifically the horizontal stretching. She immediately found clients interested in testing out these concepts. Through trial and error, she would present makeshift fonts specifically designed for each person. And eventually, she landed on a composite font that increased reading speeds across the board. She called it Lexand. While the education system was dismissive, the tech industry showed an immediate interest, funding studies and testing beta versions of the font. With the support she needed, Dr. Shaver Troop was free to perfect and standardize the characteristics of Lexand. For this, she needed a professional. I have never met Bonnie in person. Never. This is an entire online setup. It's a, actually kind of a metaphor for the power of the internet. In 2017, Dr. Shaver Troop heard Thomas Jockin as a guest on a podcast. And she gave the initial contact with me. We had the presentation discussion. I was very impressed by her methodology. I was very impressed by her results. And I was impressed by the scope of the problem. The scope of the problem was much more severe than my intuitions even told me. Over the next year, they worked with Google to hone in on the details of the font and test its effectiveness. Here's an example of one of those tests. 23rd graders, 8 males and 12 females, read for one minute in five fonts. All text was set at 16-point font, and the reading materials were two grade levels above the participant's current grade level. This was to ensure the typography was being measured, rather than the reading competency. Each student read aloud a passage set in a control of Times New Roman. Then four of the Lexan series, Regular, Deca, Mega, and Giga. 
17 of the 19 students had better scores using Lexand, with an almost 20% increase in words correct per minute. Dr. Shaver Troop, Thomas Jockin, and Google were able to scientifically prove that their font increased reading speeds. So what makes this font quantitatively easier to read? Well, it comes down to three factors. Hyperexpansion of character spacing, expanded font outline shapes, sans serif. But the key is the individual fonts within the font family. Lexand has been modified into seven different fonts designed to accommodate each individual's reading level and preference. They are sans serif design and they move from a relatively tight spacing relationship at the, at the basic level and then they progressively move with a more extreme intensity, both in terms of going wider in the letter form itself and the spacing between the letter forms getting uh, looser, you could say it that way. Lexand as a font family was designed to be easier to read, but the ability to choose which particular font works best for you is what makes Lexand especially unique. The vast majority of people who would try Lexan in the world will find a better fit for them using Lexan. In 2018, the Google Suite incorporated the Lexan font family. So you can now download the font and find out which version suits you. The ultimate goal of Thomas Jockin and Dr. Bonnie Shaver Troop is to change the way we think about typography and incorporate font design in education theory. There's 30 million US adults who have a reading level below third grade, for example, and in the world, there's 750 million people who don't have basic literacy. To reach that amount of people, Lexand is looking to transform the font for different languages and ultimately introduce the font to classrooms everywhere. So Lexand has been responded to very positively online by educators, which I find very exciting uh, as a designer seeing that. And one of the things they're saying is, oh my God, I could finally get rid of Comic Sans. So what's your favorite font? Do you use the standard fonts on Word and Google Docs, or do you use something particular? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know every time Cheddar posts a new video.